Hey guys, this is actually a replacement video for my first rant because I went back and listened to what I was saying and it sounds like I was putting people down and that was not my intent, although I was mad as hell at the moment. My intent is to put the systematic failure of boxing judging down. Now, I'm not talking about the professional ranks. Uh, I'm talking about amateur boxing right now. We've uh, been watching, and of course in many, many states, uh, they've been holding Golden Glove, their Golden Glove tournaments, and uh, getting ready for uh, and getting the winners chosen for nationals and uh, we got two guys that Joe and I, I I actually watch a array of different guys from different states but Joe and I got two guys that we like a whole lot and one is uh, in New Mexico, and another one is in Florida, and we really like these two guys. They're kind of polar opposites of each other. One's they're both lower weight classes uh, than Joe. Joe outweighs one of them by. 80 pounds, or one of them probably by 60, 65 pounds. But these these two these two guys of in lighter weight classes, they we like watch them, and not only do we like watching them, we like them as people and as young men. And I just seen today what I what I. Still believe going back and looking was a uh, theft by judges. And several weeks ago, uh, well, about six weeks ago, I saw the same thing, what I consider to be theft by judges. And now that's from these two people. But I've been watching a vast array of amateur matches, as always, from not only uh, most of the United States, but from around the world. And I keep seeing bad decisions. And I'd like to suggest something um, uh, to the powers that be, uh, UGM owners, uh, I don't have certification no longer in the U.S. or anywhere for that matter, uh, but I would strongly suggest that if you go to the, uh, the, the uh, I forget what you call it, I've been there, and you go there and you you set for these seminars, you pay an exorbitant amount of money, and they give you a whole bunch of source material and uh, the, the rules and regulations and this and that and the other, and requirements and on, on and on and on and on. Weight classes, ages, the whole nine yards. And I can't remember what the hell this is called. Anyway, you go there for two days and you sit around and you listen to a bunch of stuff and you got everywhere from the medical aspect to the uh, judging aspect to ages and weights and everything, you know, size of the gloves, every, everything. Well, you guys that still go to this thing, I would hope. And everybody needs to start thinking about this. First pair of boxing gloves I got, I believe it was in 1972 or 1973. 
and they were amateur boxing gloves. And you could always tell amateur boxing gloves from professional boxing gloves. Professional boxing gloves, they kind of look like this. It's just a cheap pair of gloves. I'm just using the way they both are, really. It's Joe's favorite pair, and these are just cheap, cheap gloves. Uh, Joe's got high dollar gloves, lace-ups, Velcros, all sorts of stuff, and seems to like these cheap gloves. But back on point, uh, you basically, you could go and buy in ounces, uh, the a professional pair of gloves, and they would be the classic brown, burnt orange color uh, that you always see, or, or you could, at times, at good places, that had a lot of boxing stuff, you could find black boxing gloves. Uh, and then, you could find a pair of white boxing gloves. But, or black boxing gloves, and amateur boxing Jesus. gloves. And there would always be, this pair, since it's white, there would be a embroidered uh, black uh, patch here, for lack of a better word, I don't know what you'd say. But it would be raised just a hair, and this would be the strike zone. And if you hit, and you hit properly with the, the knuckle, and... Uh, that would be where you'd get a point. You'd get points for that. And if you were slapping, you wouldn't get no points for that. So, you know, we're coming out with an open glove. We didn't even have these attached thumbs. You closed your own thumbs. You made your own fist. With a black pair, for example, you'd have a white strip going through here. And... It would give you your strike zone. And uh, I can't even remember. I think that's what we called it was strike zone. And But at any rate, where you'd hit and you give a, a proper punch that hit correctly, and the black part here would connect, you got points. Get it? I think maybe we need to go back to some of that. Now, I think also, uh, I've got so many Golden Glove state level winners in my family. I got uh, uh, one aunt and uncle uh, that uh, she had four boys and they all won. Every single one of those boys won. Every single one of them. Uh, multiple years. And won multiple weight categories. And uh, just in one family. And I'm very competitive. So, I, I'm, you know, a competitive person can fly off the handle quite easily. Uh, so, I want to give a little bit of a lit, logist there again. I've got two family members that played major league, not triple A, not double A baseball, not minor league baseball, although they played minor league baseball, but that made it to major the majors. Uh, I've got an uncle that played for the Chicago Cubs, San Diego Padres, uh, Los Angeles Angels when they were originally called the Los Angeles Angels. Uh, I got a cousin that played uh, for a team that was in Montreal called the Montreal Expos. One of our neighbors, three houses down, was Jack McKeon. Jack McKeon uh, managed the Cincinnati Reds and managed the Florida Marlins and took the Marlins all the way and won the pennant, won the World Series. That guy's actually whooped me, give me whippings when I was a little boy. So I've had a lot of stuff around me. And then uh, we 
had, uh, you know, I grew up around boys that were, would be considered at 13 years old, strong men to you guys today. And, uh, first day I put a pair of boxing gloves on. First day. Go out with a boy, bam, and get beat up. Get knocked, get, get, get hurt bad. I'm going to go into that. So I, I just, I come from a different world, but I come from a world where if you're stealing candy from a kid, like these judges are stealing from these young men and young girls in these tournaments that these girls compete in, uh, when you do that, it, it makes me angry. And it will continue to do so. I don't give a shit about good sportsmanship. Uh, in my reaction to that, I really, really don't. I, I don't care. You know, if you don't, if you got a problem with me not caring how I'm reacting back to somebody that's stealing from kids, then maybe I got a problem with you. If you got a problem with me. And that's okay too. There's always a block button to hit. Uh, there's always a face to punch if you face to face with somebody. Boxing's a hard sport. It's not, it shouldn't be for the timid. And I've instructed Joe from the beginning. And, uh, you, you don't, you don't play the patty cake thing. Uh, to get a decision. Because you can't trust these people today. You just simply can't trust them. i tell you who you could trust. You could trust judges back in the 1970s when they were dealing with kids. If you were 18 or under, you could trust those adults. You could literally trust them. You can't do that today. They're going to look at a kid. They're going to feel bad for a kid, maybe feel sorry for a kid. And they're going to give a kid a decision. They're going to look at one big kid, one small kid. Small kid hangs with a, the larger guy. They're going to give the decision to the smaller kid. Because they, so it's a feeling thing. Things are going off of feelings. And... That, boxing has no place for that. Now, I would ask people, if you don't really understand what I'm talking about with concerns to this, go look at Roy Jones Jr. Uh, just YouTube Roy Jones robbed in Olympics. And look at this guy beat the crap out of another guy for three rounds. Any other guy gets the decision. I mean, the other guy barely got a shot off. I'm not sure if he hit him one round. I'm not sure if he hit Roy one of those rounds. Uh, yet the guy got the decision. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, in the first video, I was talking about Teofilo Stevenson. Uh, and I believe it was February, January or February, 1980. Uh the Cuban boxing team uh, fought the USA boxing team at the Charlotte Coliseum. I was able to go see that. Uh, got to meet all those guys. Got to meet Teofilo Stevenson. Huge tall guy. I was like, oh my God, he used to be playing basketball. Tall guy. Uh, taller than, than, than he looks on television, but uh, he got a decision that that day he shouldn't have got. And uh, you know, they bring in and they interchange these judges, and you never know what you're going to get. And nobody's being consistent. The consistency in it, uh, you they'll judge one fight that almost mirrors another fight almost mirrors 100% and they'll give it to one guy on one side and then give it to another guy wop-sided and they'll wop side it'll be you know unanimous for this one but the mirrored image match of it unanimous for the other guy uh, 
hope that came out right. Don't half-ass sound right coming out of my mouth, but there's a lot of bad things going on. Now I want to talk to trainers, coaches, whatever you want to call yourself, gym owners, that you guys that you 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 take and you represent these kids at these events. If you see a bad decision, scream from the hilltop. Don't worry about, well, I got to go back there next year. I don't want to upset these people. It'll get worse for me. And let me tell you why. It ain't nothing about you. Right? If you work with these kids and you love these kids, place them first. And I, I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm an old, old man. But seeing some things, you know, the stupidity of the sport, the, well, we got to have do-overs because we can't tell, uh, we can't look in the rule books and see what the hell the deal is. Uh, oh, in uh, Olympic boxing, uh, which is what the Golden Gloves do, we need to have three-minute rounds for 18-year-olds or above, whatever they're bracketing it out is. Three minutes, three minutes. Why the hell is Florida going to say, well, uh, you can do a minute and a half or two minutes or three minutes or whatever. How does that change? How do you defend that? You, know, you take everything straight across the board. Florida should be doing what the rest of them are doing. You know, you're either in the uh, AEBA or you're not which is Olympic boxing. It's international. You're either going to be a part of that or you're not. You know, but for the national committee to stand up and say, well, we're not going to take people from South Carolina because they went a minute and a half in this age bracket and we're requiring two minutes. So if you want to come here, you got to do it over. You know, it's bullshit. That's what it is. You can't accept that. You start out accepting that kind of stupidity, and it, it, and if uh, even if you asked for the bullshit, because they are the ones that are supposed to know more than you or me, they should know more than the trainers, the coaches, the gym owners, or the boxers. So if I go ask somebody, can I put this kid in a uh, a two minute round? or whatever, minute and a half round. Uh, and they say, well, yeah, you can do that. And then it turns out, really, you can't do that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, backwards. Uh, I don't want to use the R word, but it's R thinking and as slow as I am and as mentally as I'm breaking down in old age I'm not thinking arded it's not the way I think I'm trying to think logical so uh, a lot of things upset me might not upset you you may be so used to it that you just are like, well, that's the way it's supposed to be. This amateur boxing, you take your wins and your losses. Now, a lot of losses, amateur losses, are due to bad judging. There should be way more undefeated amateurs that go on to the pro ranks and do great. There should be way more. But everybody gets beaten in the amateurs. It's a normal process of it. No, it's not normal. It's bad judging. And if you take a kid somewhere and you're representing them in a tournament and it's a bad decision, you can't think about, well, I'm going to have to deal with these people next year or they hold two events a year. I'm going to have to deal with them in five or six months. No, you got to stand up against bad judging. People not standing up against bad judging is why the Olympics got so bad that clearly Roy Jones Jr. 
who won the gold medal got a silver medal. And there wasn't nothing he could do about it. So, it's because people don't stand up. And the more nobody's standing up, the worse this is going to get. And it's on, and a newsflash to everybody. Everybody's, well, we're on to the Olympics. Well, how the hell do you know you're on to the Olympics? How would you know that? Uh, how do you know boxing's even going to be in the Olympics? Here's one thing I know. I've given money to an organization who has fought to keep boxing in the Olympics because the Olympics and the committees for the majority of the countries are fighting to take boxing out of the Olympics. And they can take boxing out of the Olympics tomorrow morning. They could take boxing out of the Olympics after the first matches start. They could box one day and then say, oh, yeah, taking it out, not going to do it no more. They can do anything they wish to do. I'll remind some of you young guys, it, was, it, it wasn't much beyond yesterday that we were fighting to even keep Olympics in boxing because people are getting sick of the shit. They're getting sick of it. And decent people don't like usually adult obese adult adult obese people to rob kids of their candy. We don't like it. We don't we don't I don't, and, and and we don't accept it. And and my old ass is trying to tell you don't accept it. There's nothing normal about bad uh, judging in boxing. It's awful. It's awful. Go look. Uh, the USA team versus Cuba in 1980. And take a look, see, and see, uh, hear Howard Cosell and the commentators talk about how dirty and rotten it was back in 1980. Right? And it was dirt. It started getting dirty and rotten then. Because people were like, well, you got to, and here's what happened. In Charlotte, those people weren't going to take it. North Carolinians, usually, typically, at least 40 years ago, didn't cotton to bullshit. Maybe they do now, but we didn't back then. And we were all throwing beer cups and bottles and all sorts of stuff into the ring. And after Cosell sat there for 30 minutes going, it is a terrible travesty what has happened here. Uh, as soon as people start throwing Pepsi cups and bottles and things into the ring, it is a travesty here. The, there'll never be an event come back to Charlotte. Nothing will ever happen in Charlotte again. It's terrible. You know, so you're damned if you react to something. So you might as well go ahead and react to it because you're going to be damned anyway. So there's no sense in it. But, you know, here's what I do with Joe. I tell him, hey, don't go in trying to win points on somebody. Go in trying to knock somebody spark out. Don't play. He just broke some ribs on somebody the other day. Well, it was a little bit further than the other day. We, nobody wants him to come around. Nobody wants to spar him. I like it that way. It's difficult because you can't find nobody to spar. But we're not we're not fucking around. That ain't what we do. You know, we're not a kinder, gentler point system person. You know, we're a we want to break your jaw. I mean, it's what sports about. It's not what amateur sports about. But uh, you were young boxers. You know, you get one, two, one, two, one, two, hook. You know what? Go in there and let them punches fly and quit, quit, get the basics of the, the your technique and the technicals down. But go in there and let the hands fly. You, you can't mess around. You back up one, one foot at one moment, in one round, and they'll give the round to the other guy if they like that guy. It's just the excuse they get. So you need to be moving forward, and you need to be letting those damn hands go. 
punch. And you need to be hitting. Every punch needs to be with grand authority. And quit worrying about trying to get points. And let me tell you something. If you weigh 120 pounds, don't tell me you don't have knockout power because you damn sure do. And if, if, if a coach, a trainer, or whoever else is telling you different, uh, Teddy Atlas thinks this. He said, you're either born with it, you either have it or you don't. No, you can build punching power. You can build the crap out of it. Mike Tyson's even said that many a times. It's in, uh, Sonny Liston said that. They're two of the hardest hitters ever. George Foreman said it. You got to practice at it. You got to get your brain conditioned. And, and you got to use leverage with the strength that God has given you. But you ain't born with that. You can work on that. Lighter weights aren't even trying. They're trying to outpoint each other. And you just got to get away from that. You know, if you, if you don't, young boxers, young amateur boxers, you just, maybe you have the greatest of everything works perfect for you. But I'm telling you right now, a lot of you are going to be disappointed. You need to get in the ring and you need to box. And boxing has got slugging involved in it. And, uh, I've never met anybody other than Candy. I don't even want to say nothing. I've never really met anybody that doesn't expect a boxer to not try to knock the other guy out. That's all we try to do. We don't want to leave nothing up for somebody to uh, subjectively figure out the winner or the loss. And if there's, if you got any way of controlling that, you need to control that. You just need to control it. And anyway, we got to do something. Uh, it's a hell. Of, it, it's probably nothing for you because you're used to it. It's a life you big grew up in. If your ass came up and you in the eighties, nineties, or two thousands, and you think you're an adult and you got a few years on you, maybe you got a grandkid. You still, you still grew up in a world uh, that ain't got no damn sense. Where, every, where most of the stuff that's normal to you is not right. It's just not right. So, just... It hurts me beyond belief, even when I ain't involved in it. To see somebody 18, 19, even 20, 21 or younger, for some fat slob to steal their candy, to steal their treats, to sip, sip them, uh, to simply uh, thieve their reward and hand it to another guy that didn't deserve it. There's something fundamentally wrong with that. And something fundamentally in this world, wrong in this world, that gym trainers would be saying, hey, all right, well, we'll get it next time. You know, you got to stand the hell up. I don't know. I grew up around professional athletes. So, uh, I mean, they weren't up my ass. I wasn't sleeping in the same bed with them and in the same house with them every day. But uh, I was reared by a woman that her brother and other family members were professional athletes. My mother was stronger than most of you male uh, gym boxing trainers or coaches, whatever you want to address you, whatever the fucking pronoun of the day is for it. So just over here, we're going to be pissed off if a kid gets his candy stolen. Right? That's what we're going to do. Over here, this kid tries to knock the hell out of the other kid so his candy don't get stolen. 
And if you can just take loss and just walk off and be okay with it, uh, you'll never be a winner. So you need to be upset when you take a loss, but you do need to remember uh, greater victory comes through loss. So I'm not, be careful with what you think I'm thinking here. Uh, but it's always a good thing to try to win. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing that you get upset because you lost. That means you need to do something better and fix something. And if you if you have if you're a boxer and you see some crummy decisions coming at you, then start knocking people the fuck out. How you see? Don't let it go into their hands. Uh, it's easy in amateur boxing. You hit somebody so hard. They're standing there dazed and confused, and a referee will stop it. They'll stop it for you. And you don't have to go no further. Just knock the living hell out of the guy. Just knock the living hell out of the other guy. And move on to the next round. Because they'll stop the fight. You know, it's ain't pro boxing, you know, with three knockdown rules and, uh, uh, you know, having to break somebody's jaw, all you have to do is hit the guy and disorient him for five seconds, and the referee's going to stop the fight. So, uh, just start hitting hard, guys. And to you guys that's been getting bad decisions, God bless you. And to the people that's doing this, shame on you. Uh, and... Another thing, quickly, I just think that I'm running 31 minutes. Look, this crazy candy ass thought of, uh, well, did I really see that correctly? Was I really, did, did everyone else see what I saw? That's crazy. You know what you see. If you second guess yourself, go back and look at it again if you have that availability. But don't worry about you seeing what everybody else saw. That's how doomed failure comes about. That's why you, you listen to the news today and they lie like hell to you. And everybody just accepts it. Because nobody's, because everybody's, well, they wouldn't be telling everybody the same thing. Does everybody feel like they're telling the truth? All right, then, I better not say anything or something's wrong with me. No, you need to stand up. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying. You know, stand the hell up. Just stand up. I could picture myself now. But half these decisions I've seen on the last six weeks, my mother would, would have stood up and caused more damn ruckus and heartache at these tournaments, then your boxing trainers would. And that's an effemination of boxing. That's, a, that's, that's an effemination of sport in general. That's not good sportsmanship. No, it's not. Uh, accepting bad things and, uh, and just letting bad people run wild that's not good sportsmanship. I'm sorry, but it's just not. It's just not.